Hi class, uh, we're going to be doing a, a little video on the nervous system histology. So some of these, these photos that you're going to see are taken from our class microscopes. Some of our students took some great pictures and I'll show them to you. Um, and some pictures are just pulled from the web just to give you an idea of what you need to look for. So when we're talking about the cells of the nervous system, there are all, remember there's only two types of cells. You have your neurons and your glia cells. The neurons are the big excitable cells that are receiving information and, and sending information out through axons and having action potentials. Those are our excitable cells. The glia cells, much, much smaller. Um, they outnumber the neurons vastly outnumber the neurons and they are there to take care and protect the neurons. So always remember, it's if, if I ask you what type of cell is it, you're either going to say a neuron or a glia cell. And if I ask you for the specific name, then you can use some adjectives to describe your neuron or, or the, the proper name of the, the glia cell. So uh, let's get started just with a general overview of what neurons um, basically look like. So when you see a neuron, number one, th these are huge. Here is the cell body of the neuron. Huge, huge. In the background, you see all these little dots. All those little dots are just the glia cells. Remember, um, we are going to classify our neurons um, structurally. Are they going to be multipolar, bipolar, or unipolar? That depends on how many processes they have extending from their cell body. Remember the processes are either going to be the axon, which takes information away from the cell body. Um, our dendrites, dendrites receive information and send it into the cell body. So multipolar have more than two processes, and all these are multipolar. You can see one, two, three, four. M there is many um, processes going into these cell bodies. So these are all multipolar. Whereas a unipolar would just have one process extending from its cell body. And unipolar, we are going to be we will, we will find those only in the PNS, unipolar only in the PNS. They are sensory neurons, sensory afferent neurons, and we will find multipolar in the CNS. The CNS only has multipolar neurons. So let's get started. When you see a big cell like this, the, when you, you know it's a neuron when you're going to see this dark stained nucleolus, the dark stained nucleus, nucleolus surrounded by a, usually a lighter stained nu nucleus. But this is, if I asked you what kind of cell this is, you would say, number one, what kind of cell is it? It is a neuron. Functionally, what is it? Um, structurally, what is it? It is a multipolar. Multipolar. Structurally, it, it is built with multiple processes. So this is a multipolar neuron. These little dots, these are just your glia cells. This was taken from one of our, our slides that we had in class. Again, you see these big structures here. It's hard to see the nucleus and nucleolus. You can up in here, um, but it's, it's hard on this magnification. But these are definitely multipolar neurons. Again, the dark little dots in the background, all the glia cells. And be sure you review the glia cells of the CNS versus the glia cells of the PNS. 
Again, this was taken from one of our slides in the classroom. Here you can see, maybe you can, maybe you can't. It's a lighter stained um, nucleus and then the dark nucleolus right in the center of this guy. So again, these are going to be our neurons. They have more than two processes, so they are multipolar neurons. Again, the glia cells, the dots in the background. Now when we look at, this is a cross section of a spinal cord, and it's always a good idea if you are looking at these slides, hold up the slide and see what you can see of the spinal cord. It's so easy to see all this stuff. Remember in the spinal cord, this is our white matter. The white matter is outside. The gray matter is deep to the white matter. Remember, white matter contains our myelinated axons, and our gray matter is where we're going to have our cell bodies of our neurons. And on this, this cross-section, we actually have intact, in we have the dorsal root right here. Here is the dorsal root ganglia right here. This is the dorsal root, and here is the ventral root. And out farther here, they're going to be um, forming a spinal nerve. Remember, dorsal, dorsal roots carry only sensory information. The dorsal root ganglia, what is a ganglia? A collection of cell bodies in the PNS. So the cell bodies of the PNS are going to be in these ganglia. These are sensory, these are unipolar, sensory, afferent neurons are going to be living in here. And they're going to be sending their axons into the CNS here in the spinal cord. So this is going to be your posterior horn, lateral horn, anterior horn right here. You always know if you have the dorsal root right here, you know this is the dorsal side of the spinal cord. So this is going to be the posterior horn, the ventral horn. Here we are again. We have the, the ventral horn, the dorsal, the dorsal horn. <clears throat> here is the anterior median fissure. Now, actually, I am going to be showing you, the next slide is, is actually focused in on this area right here. So the next slide is going to be showing you cells that are in this anterior or ventral horn. Remember, this is gray matter, so it's going to have what? Gray matter has lots of cell bodies, right? So we're going to see lots of cell bodies of what? Cell bodies of neurons. <clears throat> Who lives? What kind of uh, neurons hang out, live in the ventral or anterior horn? So here, this is showing you, these are the cell bodies that are hanging out in the anterior horn. You know it's, you know it's a neuron. See the dark stained, um, the dark stained nucleolus and the lighter stained nucleus. You see them all through here. So once you know you see them, you go, I know these are neurons. This is the gray matter from here. This is gray matter. This is going to be your white matter. You're just seeing myelinated axons in through here. So this is the gray matter here. So who lives in the anterior horn of the spinal cord? We know they're neurons. We know they're multipolar neurons. These are somatic motor neurons. 
somatic meaning they are going to the skeletal muscles. The somatic motor neurons live in the anterior horn of the of the spinal cord. Where do the visceral motor neurons live at levels T1 through L2? At levels T1 through L2 in the lateral horns of the spinal cord, who do we find there? The visceral motor neurons. The visceral motor neurons of the autonomic nervous system. Uh, well, for our sympathetic nervous system, they're hanging out T1 through L2. In the parasympathetic nervous system, we'll find visceral motor neurons in the sacral region. But they're also going to be in the lateral horns. But in the ventral horns, the anterior horns, we are only going to find somatic motor neurons. Somatic motor neurons, somatic, going to the skeletal muscles. Visceral motor neurons are part of our autonomic nervous system. And here's just a, a close-up of, um, of a somatic motor neuron in the anterior horn. So make sure you understand that the, the visceral... Uh, the, the visceral motor neurons and the somatic motor neurons live in separate regions in the, sp in the gray matter of the spinal cord. They, they, they keep separate. They are separate. So here's a, another good cross-section of the spinal cord. Again, again, you see the dorsal root ganglia here. We have the posterior horn. The lateral horn, um, the lateral horns are going to be around here. The anterior or ventral horns are going to be here. And at this magnification, the dorsal root ganglia, you can kind of start seeing the cell bodies here. Remember, what kind of cell bodies hang out in the dorsal root ganglia? A ganglia is a collection of cell bodies in the PNS. These are going to be sensory, afferent, unipolar, unipolar neurons. So this is an actual picture um, that we took from one of our slides. This is showing you a close-up of the dorsal root ganglia. So the dorsal root ganglia if I tell you this is from the dorsal root ganglia and this arrow is actually pointing at a cell, what do you see? You see a nucleus, a, uh, you see a nucleus, a nucleolus. See all these? Dark stain nucleolus, nucleus. You can see all these, right? These are big cells. What are these cells? These are neurons. These are neurons. They are in the dorsal root ganglia. What neuron lives, what type, structural and functional type of neuron lives in the dorsal root ganglia? Structurally, it is unipolar. Do you see any processes coming off of this guy? No. You just see the cell body here. It is unipolar and it is it's functionally, it is sensory. It is taking sensory information and going to be delivering it into the CNS. So this is a unipolar sensory neuron. And these little cells, these little, God, my pointer keeps going away. These little cells that make a ring around it. And you can see these little cells making rings around these other um, unipolar neuron cell bodies. These are satellite cells. So satellite cells are in, are the glia cells found in the PNS. We have Schwann cells and satellite cells, the two S's, Schwann and satellite. Satellite cells are kind of like the astrocytes um, 
that are the glia cells in the CNS, these satellite cells take care of the neuron, and they are just wrapped around a ring around the cell body of our neuron. So dorsal root ganglia, here is our sensory unipolar neuron surrounded by a ring of our satellite cells. Just an another picture I pulled from the web a little bit closer. Um, you can see the satellite cells making a little ring around our neuron. Here is the nucleus, nucleolus, and the lighter nucleus of our unipolar neuron. Make sure you know that. Now we're going, I'm going to be showing you um, some nerves. Let's see what's next. Yes. We're going to have a, a longitudinal section of a nerve. Now, if I say the word nerve, you automatically know you are in the CNS or PNS. What is the definition of a nerve? A nerve is a collection of axons or nerve fibers in the PNS. Remember, a nerve is only in the PNS. You got all your spinal nerves, 31 pairs of spinal nerves in the PNS. Your cranial nerves, it's in, those are nerves. They are in the PNS. Your sciatic nerve, definitely in the, the PNS. But this is what we're going to be seeing. We are in the PNS, so who does the myelination in the, the PNS? Our Schwann cells. So here's, sh here's showing you the nucleus of a sh one Schwann cell. Remember, one Schwann cell can only my myelinate just one section of one um, axon. So Schwann cell here, Schwann cell here. This is the myelin sheath. Here they're calling it the, sh the Schwann's sheath. It's just your myelin, your myelin sheath. Where the two Schwann cells come together, there's going to be a little gap. That is your node of Ranvier. And your axon, remember your axon and your nerve fiber is, is flowing through here. Got it? So let's take a look. Remember these are longitudinal sections. So longitudinal sec sections of a nerve. Lots of axons here, all piled up. Here you can see a nice example of, here's the myelin sheath, myelin sheath. Yep, there it goes, myelin sheath. Here is our axon running through. This is a node of Ranvier. This, this, this pointer is not pointing at anything, so don't look at it. Here is a node of Ranvier. See the little where it comes in, the puckering? Here is a node of Ranvier. Here is a node of Ranvier. You're going to see lots of them here. You, here you can see another node of Ranvier right here. So remember, this is the myelin sheath made by the Schwann cells. And this is the axon. And here you can see the axon running all the way through. <coughs> Excuse me. Here's another picture. Here you can see a real clear node of Ranvier right here. The myelin sheath. And here is your axon the nerve fiber running through. Here's another node of Ranvier, your axon, myelin sheath. Here's another node of Ranvier, axon, myelin sheath. Once you, you train your eye to see this, it's pretty easy to see. Uh, easy wheezy, yes. Node of Ranvier, myelin sheath. Come on, arrow, myelin sheath, nerve fiber, aka axon in there. Here's a axon, node of Ranvier, yes. Myelin sheath, yes. Now this is a teased one. When we say teased, we are actually separating out individual nerve fibers or axons from each other. 
Here, the axons are all just bam, axon, axon, axon. So we're teasing them out. We're getting some separation between the nerve fibers. So this is an individual nerve fiber here, here, and here. Easy wheezy. What do you see? Node of Ranvier. Here is the myelin sheath. Oh dear. The myelin sheath. Myelin sheath made by what cell in the PNS? This is a nerve. So this is Schwann. And here you can see the, the axon right here. The axon is running through. This gives you the illusion that the axon stops. It does not stop. It is not cut off. Here you can see the axon running through. So this is a teased, teased um, nerve fibers. Another tease sample. Here you can see the two myelin sheaths coming together. That's going to form your node of Ranvier, the myelin sheath and the axon. Here it is again, axon, myelin sheath, the node of Ranvier. So by now you're saying, I got it, right? I will do fine on the lab practical because I got it. Here is the node of Ranvier. This one's a little bit blurry. Node of Ranvier. The myelin sheath, not really easy to see, but then the axon is, is in there. So that is the longitudinal sections of a nerve. Now we're going to do a cross section of a nerve. A cross section. So make sure you understand what a cross section of a nerve is in the first place. If not, ask me. Uh, this is a cross section. This is a drawing of a cross section of a nerve. So here are our individual axon fibers. They are myelinated and in between the axon fibers is going to be the endoneurium. Remember these are kind of built, built like muscles. Endoneurium. Endoneurium is the is what's in between the individual axons and we are going to wrap our all our axon um, fibers with perineurium, perineurium to form a fascicle. So here we have one, two, three, three fascicles. Three fascicles. The fascicles are bundles of axons that are wrapped in perineurium. And then we are going to wrap the whole nerve, the entire nerve, with epineurium. Epi, remember, means on top. So it's on top of the nerve. Remember, these are just axons. So here we can, here's what is actually going to look at. So if you look at this, you're going to go, wow, I can see here is a fascicle. Here's a fac fascicle. Here's a fascicle. Fascicle, 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 fascicle. So this is going to be your epineurium going around the nerve. This is going to be on high power. So here are our individuated, the MA stands for myelinated axons. These are all individual nerve fibers, axons. In, in between these axon fibers, this white stuff is going to be your endoneurium. Yes, endo inside. Here you can see some of the perineurium. The perineurium is going to wrap around all these axon axons to make a fascicle. Well, we're done. So I hope this little review helped you. If um, you have any questions, just ask me and I'll see you in class. And I actually wanted to show you this picture. This is the nervous system in action. Look at all this electricity happening. The nervous system in action. Awesome. See you in class. Bye.